So yeah, we shall introduce Frank Quietly, comic book superstar. Do you want to tell them why you did you call Frank? Uh, do they well, all know that? Yeah, one? we've we've already been through this, but um, it's a spoonerism of quite frankly because I used to work in a kind of an elect electric soup. It was a small press thing, and it was kind of scatological slapstick style stuff. There we go. Is it covered? Head behind. Oh yes, it is. And I head behind the uh, the name Frank quietly. Practicing on the Dell. No, no, I didn't want my mum and dad to know. That was the okay, game. <laughs> so anyway, we thought we'd set, set off talking about uh, uh, some sort of uh, your early influences because you're not actually much of a comic book reader, are you? Which is quite rare in comics, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of these rarities in comics that I didn't grow up reading 2000 AD and I didn't see any of the Star Wars films until the first one I saw I was about, I think I was in my early 30s when I saw the first one. So, um, slightly different set of influences um, than the, a lot of other people in comics but um, as we'll see, there's a lot of kind of similar ones too. Yeah, one of them being Dudley Watkins. Yep. Which we've got. This is a Scottish artist that um, drew the, the, the Bruins and Our Willie, which were two full page newspaper strips <clears throat> in, a, in a Sunday newspaper. We've got a... um, and he was probably, he's certainly, he's certainly my earliest influence and probably my biggest influence um, in comic books. Um, I was influenced by a lot of other illustrated books that I had in the house, but um, I think I think this guy was probably the biggest influence on me. Um, I don't know how much I actually picked up um, storytelling wise from any of the artists that influenced me um, right up until I'd actually been working in comics for a few years because I, I know there are now courses for comic book art but when I started out it was just, I mean we just we just kind of learn as we go along and made it up as you went along didn't yeah um, and my idea of storytelling originally was just you know you, you try and make things as clear as possible I had no real I had no real set of rules or guidelines or anything um, that I adhered to. I think, I think you see, because uh, this is an example of, of uh, the greens, isn't it? This is sort of your take on the brooms, isn't it? The, this is what you did for Electric Soup. Yeah. And I think you can tell us that sense with the Dudley Watkins. It's a sort of a fixed camera and it, everything takes place. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like a sitcom. You yeah, know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and all the storytelling's like, it's all like, it's all body language and facial expression and, you know, there's, there's not really, I'm not ever really thinking of camera angles or the way the eyes drawn around the, the page, you know. I mean, I, I obviously had a basic understanding of the fact that time does tend to move from left to right in any given frame. Um, just, I mean, even to something as simple as who speaks first. You know, yeah. being nearer the left or nearer the top of the, the panel, but um, that's sort of, sort of a practical thing, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. Than, uh, um, well, so shall we move on? Yeah, a, yeah, sort of uh, how you got into two thousand AD? Well, magazine, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a Judge Dead magazine. It was it was doing electric soup. You know, we we used to go to local comic marts and eventually, like, uh, they like comic conventions. At the time there was actually Frank Plowright who used to do the, the UCAC conventions. He, uh, he used to do one in Glasgow as well. Uh, 1990 was the first one. So by that time we'd been up and running for a year. And, uh, we, we would hire a table and we'd, we would sell the comics at, at the, the comic convention and people you know, would say to me, you should really, you know, you should think about doing this for money. 
which sounded like a great idea because by that time I, I didn't really consider drawing comics, oddly enough, although I liked comics, I never really thought of drawing comics as a, as a job. I thought book illustration or maybe poster design or something was... Is the, that partly because you didn't feel like you were a, a proper comic artist in some sense? Though? Well yeah, but there is that thing when you're in the small press, especially the humour side of small press that, you know, you, I didn't really feel part of that club. And there used to, there used to be, I think there used to be a big schism that we might not be aware of these days between people who did maybe superhero comics in 2000 AD and there was thought to be, I don't think as much in this country as there was in the States, but there was definitely yeah. a, a bit of a, well they do it professionally and we're over here and there's another band over here. I don't think it's yeah. quite as separated <coughs> now really. Yeah, so, but this is, this is, Missionary Man, which is the first, this was the first strip you did for uh, Fleetway as was, wasn't it? It was the first character, this wasn't actually, I did I did two seven page shorts first, oh, right. and then I did... Did they the, get published then? No? Yeah, and then I did the, yeah, and then oh, I did the Shimura. Oh, right, of course, yeah, yeah. And then I did this longer story. Right. So. But again, you can see, I think... You can see it's the, there's the same sort of storytelling aesthetic here. Yeah, it's the medium show. It's, it's pulled yeah. out and, and, and the action unfolds at a medium a medium shot. And it's not, you're not really, really in there with the characters very yeah. much. Yeah. But, I, th but I, think, I actually think that's what <coughs> made your stuff stand out a lot. Because you didn't do any of those, you know, the big um, Gil Kane up the nose shots and all that yeah. sort of crap that, were, that everybody else did. <laughs> But I, th I think well, that's well, what I didn't know that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And when I started getting the, kind of reintroduced to American comics, there was a lot of that kind of image stuff around where mm. every page was, you know, pinup. Yeah. You every <coughs> you would choose you would choose the, the the panel on the page that was going to be the pinup. Yeah. And you would do a whole splash page of that, and you would stick the other panels around about it, you know. And there was always a big hand coming out and stuff. And, and Sam Bisley used to do that as well, didn't he? To a degree. To a degree, but he, yeah, but he, yeah, I liked Sam and stuff. Oh know, yeah, yeah, I, I did, but but, but he, more he, than the the image style yeah, stuff, I just yeah. didn't really get that type of comic. Nah. But um, by the time by the time uh, I was doing Electric Soup for a while, just before I started doing the the magazine work. Um, I had been introduced to the work of uh, Mobius. To put that term on, right? yeah, go on. and a uh, Bruno. <coughs> so, if people know that, this is this is. Uh, I mean, every most people know Akira, I think, don't they? Yeah. But uh, I don't know what I'm doing now? Really. Yeah, there's, and there's quite a different. Generally speaking, there's quite a different kind of sensibility and a different uh, dynamic with Otomo's work and with Mobius's work. Um, so they were two quite different influences. But, yeah, because uh, Otomo's, it's that Japanese thing where the storytelling's quite decompressed, isn't it? Yeah. Showing, which, it, which I think ties in with your stuff. And it does it definitely, I know there's, there's maybe more sort of uh, variation in shots, isn't there? Oh yeah, I do, yeah. But it's very, it's very precise and it's that sort of thing where it shows the scene and it, it reveals itself and it's not overly dramatic and I think your work had that in as well, didn't it? Or I always has really, but... Yeah, but one, one of the things that was missing from my work um, when I started out was was this idea that, it, you know, it's good to start with an establishing shot so you actually know once you go in and see you know, like people sitting at the table playing cards or whatever, it's actually good to start off with a shot of the whole room, you know, just to establish the scene before you actually move into it. There was a lot of really basic stuff that I hadn't actually considered. Like when I was when I was working the electric suit doing the doing the rooms. But you, the sort, of had, but you sort of had establishing shots by the fact that you had everybody in the thing I'm, and they're all bit. establishing shots almost. Yeah, but which is what made it so samey. It was, you know, it was like being at a really Shite theatre production rather than <laughs> being a <that> job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 